On July 13, 1943, at 4.43 a.m., Lieutenant Alexander Faden was positioned in the command turret of a Soviet T-34 tank, observing through the fog of the Ukrainian steppe as a formation of 25 German Panzer IV tanks advanced toward him. It was another suicide mission, the Germans held a 5-to-1 numerical superiority, and their panzers were considered invincible on the open plains. The chances of survival were practically zero. To destroy a Panzer IV with conventional ammunition, Soviet tanks had to hit the target at specific angles and from a very short distance. Most T-34s were destroyed before they could even fire a second shot. The Germans knew this. Their commanders had studied Soviet tactics and knew every limitation of the Red Army's tank artillery, openly mocking it. But that morning, something different was loaded into the 76mm cannons of Faden's T-34. It was something German engineers considered technically impossible. Something a Wehrmacht general, upon hearing the rumors, would have called a Soviet fantasy, a hollow charge capable of piercing 100 mm of armor without needing a direct perpendicular impact. Faden pulled the trigger. Three shots. The first shell narrowly missed, but the second hit the side of a Panzer IV at a 60-degree angle. The German tank exploded from the inside out, its turret flying 15 meters into the air. What happened over the next two hours would change the war on the Eastern Front forever and lead to the destruction of 25 Panzer tanks that never saw the attack coming, because their sloped armor had become obsolete overnight. The design for that ammunition had begun in 1941, addressing the problem that conventional shells only pierced armor when hitting at a right angle making both methods useless against new German sloped armor designs. The theoretical solution was simple, make the shell concentrate all its energy into a single point, creating a jet of molten metal capable of piercing any armor, regardless of the angle. The problem was that this required a shaped explosive charge in the form of an inverted cone inside the shell. The initial response from the Soviet Defense Committee was unanimous, impossible. A 76 mm shell undergoes an acceleration of 15,000 times the force of gravity when fired, which would instantly crush any delicate conical cavity. Furthermore, the shell spins at 20,000 revolutions per minute, which no known hollow charge design could withstand. But Dr. Mikhail Chukov, a physicist at the Moscow Institute of Chemistry, would not accept impossible as an answer. His team worked for 14 months in absolute secrecy creating miniaturized copper liners molded with millimeter precision and developing explosives that functioned even under extreme rotation. The result was the BP-350A shell, a high-explosive anti-tank, heat, round. The device fit into the 76 mm shell and worked by creating a directed explosion that, upon hitting the armor, generated a jet of liquid metal at 8,000 meters per second, capable of piercing 100 millimeters of steel. In May 1943, T-34 No. 347 tested the new ammunition against captured Panzer IV armor at the Kabinka testing grounds near Moscow. Five targets, eight shots, five complete penetrations. The Red Army canceled the rest of the tests and began mass production immediately. But there was a critical problem, absolute secrecy. If a BP-350 a hollow charge fell into enemy hands, Nazi engineers could replicate it or develop countermeasures. The decision was clear. BP-350A shells would only be used in decisive offensives where the recovery of unexploded ammunition by the enemy was unlikely. General Nikolai Vatutin personally escorted the first 2,000 BP-350A shells to the Kursk region in June 1943, and Marshal Georgi Zhukov distributed the ammunition to three tank brigades operating in the southern sector of the Kursk salient including the 5th Guards Tank Brigade, where Lt. Faden served. Faden's T-34 had been attacked nine times in the last two months, firing over 400 conventional shells and hitting only three panzers, a brutal rate of 133 shots per kill. On July 12, 1943, the tank received 12 special shells, and the crew was trained in absolute secrecy. The BP-350 rounds were marked only as Special Ammunition Type 5. On the morning of July 13, the 5th Guards Brigade was deployed to defend a key position near the village of Prokhorovka. 
At 8.30 a.m., 25 Panzer IVs from the 2nd SS Panzer Division Das Reich emerged from the fog in attack formation. The Soviets had only five operational T-34s in that section. One Panzer hit Lt. Petrov's T-34 with a direct shot, and the tank exploded instantly. The Panzers continued to advance, confident in their superiority. But Lt. Faden had orders to test the new ammunition. Three shots in eight seconds. The first BP 350A shell missed the target by two meters. The second hit the side of a Panzer IV at a 60 degree angle, where it would normally have ricocheted. The hollow charge detonated on impact, creating a jet of molten copper that pierced the 30 mm side armor like butter. The jet penetrated the ammunition compartment. The Panzer exploded from the inside out, its turret tossed into the air like a toy. The third shot hit another Panzer in the rear piercing the engine. Two kills with three shots. Faden's crew was stunned, and the official artillery report stated, the value of the BP-350A shell cannot be overstated. During the following weeks of July 1943, the Germans began to realize something had changed. Veteran panzer commanders reported inexplicable experiences, tanks being destroyed by side shots that previously would have ricocheted. Captain Klaus Becker, a Panzer Company commander, reported that Soviet shells were now piercing their side armor even at impossible angles, as if they knew exactly where the tanks were most vulnerable. German military intelligence tried to figure out what was happening but considered it impossible for the Soviets to have developed functional hollow charges for tank guns. An August 1943 intelligence report dismissed rumors of a new type of ammunition as technically implausible, likely being disinformation or exaggeration. General Heinz Guderian reportedly commented sarcastically that if the Soviets were putting hollow charges in tank shells, they might as well put nuclear reactors in every T-34. He was being sarcastic, but by the end of 1943, 23 different Soviet factories were producing 15,000 BP-350A shells per day. In August 1943, the BP-350A found its ideal targets, the Panzer V Panther and Panzer VI Tiger. These heavy tanks were the primary German weapons against the Soviets on the Eastern Front, with frontal armor up to 120 mm. With conventional shells, the T-34 had to attack from the rear or the flanks, but with the BP-350A, any angle became lethal because the shell pierced regardless of the armor's slope. Military historian David Glantz described a night combat near Kiev where the night flickered with cannon flashes, smoldering turrets and bright fires on the surface attested to the precision of Soviet tank artillery and the efficiency of the secret BP-350A shell. Eight of the fourteen attacking Panthers were destroyed, and a German supply column was saved from destruction. Throughout 1943 and 1944, the BP-350A was responsible for 40% of tank kills, even though it represented only 20% of the ammunition used. With an efficiency rate 200% higher than conventional ammunition, the confidence of panzer commanders in their tactics was rapidly disintegrating. At 6.22 a.m. on December 24, 1943, Lieutenant Faden's T-34 opened fire on a column of Tigers near Jatomir. The T-34 was a veteran of BP-350A shells, having destroyed 11 German tanks since July. Its rate of fire was devastating, 8 shots per minute. In 14 minutes, two Tigers were pierced and destroyed. However, Faden's T-34 had exhausted its special ammunition and was using conventional shells, which ricocheted off the Tigers' frontal armor. A German 88mm shell hit Faden's T-34 on the side. The tank caught fire instantly. Faden and two crew members managed to escape, but the gunner and loader died in the explosion. T-34 number 347 had been the first tank to use the BP-350A in combat. Now it was a charred hole in the Ukrainian snow. Between July 1943 and the end of the war, the BP-350A shell fundamentally changed the balance of power on the Eastern Front. Against heavy German tanks, holocharge shells required only four shots per kill, while conventional ammunition needed 12 to 15. During the Battle of Berlin, T-34 No. 506 destroyed eight Panthers in 25 minutes using only BP-350A rounds. 
Marshal Georgi Zhukov wrote that the new shell was devastating and that a new doctrine of tank warfare would have to be created. By the end of the war, more than 5 million BP-350A shells had been produced. The Germans, who mocked the Soviet sardine can, never managed to develop equivalent technology at scale and paid for it with the loss of hundreds of tanks and, ultimately, the war itself. General Nikolai Vatutin, who had escorted the first shells to Kursk, was killed in an ambush by Ukrainian partisans in February 1944. Lieutenant Alexander Faden, who first tested the impossible technology, survived the war, became an engineer, and died in 1982 in Moscow. T-34 No. 347, the first to use the BP-350A in combat, was never recovered, remaining buried somewhere in Ukraine. But its story was never forgotten. Would you like me to find more technical specifications for the BP-350A or research another turning point in the Eastern Front?